What's up, everyone? This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Policy Genius. Policy Genius saves their home and auto customers an average of $1,127 a year by shopping top rated insurers in one place. If you're thinking that $1,127 a year is an oddly specific amount, well, you're right. But they crunch the numbers, and that's just what it is. In fact, crunching numbers is one of the things that Policy Genius does best. Their insurance marketplace makes it easy to compare rates from the top home and auto insurance companies to find you the best price. Here's how it works. All you do is head to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. After that, Policy Genius does all the work. They compare your existing policy against others in the market to make sure you're getting the right coverage at the best possible price. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're currently paying, they'll get you switched for free. That kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across over 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. So if you're a homeowner, head to policygenius.com. That's policygenius.com to get started. They save their home and auto insurance customers an average of. $1,127 a year. Who knows what oddly specific amount they could save you? PolicyGenius.com. We're also brought to you by Off the Record. Look, guys, I just recommended Off the Record to so many people on adventure drives. We were driving through states, right? Uh, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah. Most people there on this trip did not know any lawyers in those states. You might find yourself driving through a state where you don't know any lawyers. That's what Off the Record is for. Off the Record pairs you with qualified attorneys who will fight your moving violations, whether they're violations or misdemeanors, on your behalf. They'll go to court for you. They'll fight the tickets. They have a 97% success rate. They cover 90% of American uh, uh, districts, people. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app to save 10% off any legal fees booked through Off The Record. That's offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off The Record app. Always fight your tickets, folks. This is a financial system that you do not need to be a part of. The insurance companies, the courts, all of them run on your tickets. Get out of that system. Offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off The Record app. We're also brought to you by Auto Tempest. Guys, Auto Tempest saves you time, and therefore, it saves you money. Auto Tempest is the place that aggregates all for sale sites on the internet. If you're looking for your used cars, it brings them all into one place. You only have to type one set of search criteria instead of like a dozen. And so it doesn't matter if you make a lot of money or a little bit of money, your time is worth money. Save it at autotempest.com. Whether you're trying to buy, sell, browse, or search for something very specific, Auto Tempest is there for you. We use it here. It helps us find cars. And more importantly, it helps us save time to go on to more important things than typing the same information over and over. Autotempest.com. All right, on this episode of the podcast, Zach and I sit down at the crib. We've only got a couple of these home shows left because the studio is done, so we're talking about building the new studio, we're talking about driving the Polestar 1, and uh, and a whole lot more. It's the Smoke and Tire Podcast at Home Edition. But I think even if we aren't ready, we should find somewhere strange in that building to have a show. Yeah. Like... Like, we should go up on the lift or something, which the sound might mm. be fucking terrible. <laughs> if we were allowed to be okay. Oh, echo. yeah. It but would be very echoey, especially because, like, we would be standing on an aluminum. I think they're aluminum. I think those al- trays are aluminum. With an aluminum ceiling above us. Just, well, we'd go on the top one. Right. But then the ceiling. Oh, uh, there's, like, uh, there's, like, bars, but there's something up there. Anyway, uh, welcome back to my house, folks. Um, we get to continue with theoreticals about this conversation because on Friday came home from um, a trip 
and uh, the, and then the next day got our uh, certificate of occupancy at the new place, which if you've been following, this is very important. This is why we're recording at my house on this Yeti microphone, which actually, I, I'd love to start doing reads for them or something. This thing has been a rock star. Yeah. This, we recorded like a month of shows on a $100 Yeti blue microphone that rules. Well, with, and with the Don King hair, like, uh, it cut out all the wind with you and Rob when you guys did a show outside. Dude, me and Ferretti on a, the roof of a hotel in Whitefish, Montana, there was a legitimate, I don't know, 10, 10, 12 mile an hour gusting, like wind. It was wind. And Rob was like, are you sure about this, Mike? Like, we can go inside. I'm like, fuck inside. It's nice up here. And, and the, you know, I, we tested the audio and like, whoa, how about that? It's really good. Pretty good. Pretty good. So this, the, the you know, this the, the, the troll doll hair in the industry is called a dead cat. And um, that is, it's a good microphone, but um, the dead cat it is like so crucial yeah. to uh, windy shooting. And I think the dead cat was like maybe $9 or something. It's so worth it's it. Super, super clutch. But we got uh, the certificate of occupancy, uh, which means... Zach and I and Hannah, who murdered, and uh, and Jay uh, spent Saturday uh, unpacking and moving and building um, the studio uh, and uh, the, my office. Um, dude, it looks great. Very excited. Um, I didn't really... I was spending doing more uh, the office stuff and lobby furniture, and Zach was helping Jay with uh, the podcast studio. So I didn't even really bother up there, like, what you guys were doing. I know you were hanging lights. What was Jay's, like, strategy for this? He wanted to hang the lights and get them wired first for power because he hung, uh, I think, eight lights from the ceiling. So four of them are kind of warm spots spotlights that'll be on you know you and the guest mm -hmm. and uh, he's gonna put barn doors on them and kind of diffuse them a little bit make them soft and then he hung four colored led lights down the center that we can change what color we want to be just for fun or if we want to like put up a different accent light or something like that or throw a rave i guess are you yeah <laughs> are like, you gonna be on the ones and twos when it comes to lighting like are we adding I'm not changing this we're, shit we're gonna add show? the lighting panel to uh no. to your <laughs> i have enough shit to do <laughs> Go oh, fuck yourself. Yeah, uh, we should have Jay as the first guest on the new studio show, totally. probably to uh, to to have him explain to everybody else how this shit works. Uh, but he's he was really proud of uh, like making all the wires and stuff go hidden and making it look all nicey nice, especially because yeah. you know this the the room that we're in. You know, we had the chance to. Well, this is uh, we're pull, he's pulled up. Jay has a podcast called the Late Night Playset Podcast um, with his wife Nicole. And what's hilarious is they they were able to get Dave Letterman's uh, desk and set from the actual Dave Letterman show. He works in like set design, and then he this the set that we're looking at of his is literally in his Nicole's like, apartment it's in amazing. the valley. And it looks like a total late night talk show. The lighting is amazing, the backdrops are amazing. And we're not going like that hardcore in terms of like the backdrops. Although we are, I think, gonna try to make it look cool. Um, we definitely are gonna um, have the lighting design sort of like this in uh, so mm -hmm. that like, People look good when they come yeah. on the show. You know? Yeah, so it's not super bright. I mean, we, we had a good step with the last set with like a big, you know, softbox overhead to make people look a little softer, but this will be a little bit more intentional and it's done by a professional instead yeah. of Tim and myself. And uh, so he wanted to get the wiring up. He wanted to get all the wires hidden behind those ceiling panels and everything's going to look really, really clean. Yeah, and originally he was all... We can just get rid of the ceiling panels. And I was like, well, well, that's okay because the rest of... A lot of the rest of the building has no tiles in it. Um, and it would it would be fine for the look, except having a raw industrial look intentionally versus having a room that is designed to have tiles in it and just removing the tiles are not the same thing. Yeah. It doesn't look the same. You don't you realize that oh, you there was some decoration going on up here. It's not just a room without tiles. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it helps the sound ending a lot. That room is pretty that quiet. room. What's well, supposed to be that well, you have the opportunity to build a room from the ground up that the, the um, I believe the term 
is air channeling or air gapping. Air gaps, yeah. It's air gaps, and where they put, um, and I showed it in some, one of my videos, back, the, maybe even the first one, these sort of like ridges inside the walls to layer out the insulation with, uh, the, with air. Oh, dude. The homies are rolling by with heavy bass right now. It's oh, coming. Wow, I can feel that. You in can my feel ass. the <laughs> I can through the chair. I mean, this is it's a Sunday afternoon in Venice Beach, and the parking lots are open. So we may we may uh, we may get some accompanying <laughs> accompanying sounds in this podcast. The, the door is open because it's the only way to get. What's well, funny when you can't right? hear the music, but you feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the new place, the whole room is soundproof. Like the floor is full of this stuff called soundcrete, which is literally like sound insulating concrete that's poured. The walls, the, the glass is acoustic glass. The, and those tiles that originally it was like, oh, okay, we take them out. But like they're actually soundproof tiles. Like they're actually different. My office is in the room next door, and I have completely different walls and completely different tiles. Wow, okay. Like, They're pretty yeah. thick, the ceiling tiles. Yeah, like my office didn't need any of that, so I was like, I'm not going to spend... Like, those are really, <laughs> really expensive. Like, I was like, no, I don't, my office does not need to be soundproof. Oh, my God. Um, you know, and then, of course, we've got the view into the, um, into the, to, to the warehouse, which my, my instinct is, you know, privacy whatever but i think somebody will might want that spot there's a there's one spot that's right in front of it's the second level up um was it the third third it's the it's third, third yeah. it's the third level up on the back quad so i think maybe if somebody wants their car to be the background of the show uh i could sell you that spot and you probably wouldn't see any other cars behind it yeah probably <laughs> um, or you could put one of your cars there if you i could also put one of my cars there yeah i could stick the safari or something there but i have i have a lift that has my name on it oh, okay. and it's the lift where if i do the executive spin in the chair and look out the window longingly it's the lift i'm oh, <laughs> looking right. at That's it's right. very selfish yeah that. whatever you built the building i know i want to fucking i want that view yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um but if someone dude, else wants that view they'd have to pay you so much they'd be like when you turn your chair i want you, <laughs> i want you to see my car so you be like all right asshole well i have listen i got views available no, I, here's what's fucked up. Do you have a balcony spot for a car? Nobody, it, nobody has taken me up yet on the VIP quad. So I'm, I'm selling quads, and a couple people have taken me up on quads, right? But nobody has claimed the A1 quad, which is where you're standing in the cigar lounge. You look straight at it. No one's taken that one yet, and I'm like, what the fuck? It's not ridiculously priced. It's very competitively priced hmm. for four vertical spaces not blocked in by anything. Why did people choose a different quad than that one, do you think? Uh, that one is a little more expensive, and the only two folks who took quads uh, did not take them in order to move the cars often enough to want to pay a premium for easy in, easy out. Oh, right, because that, that's almost a straight shot. To that one's about, a straight right? shot in and out, and yeah. the way and you would never have another uh, a valet car blocking it because of where it is. So, right. like, that one is just like, if you're going to get a quad, that one is the quickest in and out. Um, but the, the without, I mean, I don't think it gives a, gives away too much about my my customers. But the couple of folks who have reserved quads at the time do not have major in out needs. Right. Which <laughs> boy does that sound creepy? They don't yeah. they don't do the in out uh, too much. No, you know what I mean? They're a little uh, older. You know, they slow down a little, a little bit. Tired. They're, not you know. Not much for the old in and out. Yeah. They uh they have low T. <laughs> <laughs> um. But look. The paper means we could move in furniture and stuff like that. And then when I get this phone in the mail, because everything, nothing's digital anymore. Mm -mm. They can't email you. It has to be get coming on paper. That's when I can actually um, open the business. So that's going to be a couple weeks, but it's okay because it takes a couple weeks to like set things in some motion. Yeah. The amount of but, boxes we had open just to set up dude, like basic furniture, basic stuff. But all the paint looks really good. I hadn't seen it since it got painted. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. So, so the railing's really cool. Our friend stunt driver Sarah uh, trims 440 on Instagram, and her homie Web Bland, not Bland on Instagram, uh, have a side hustle, which is uh, a design business. Uh, and mainly their design business is for uh, homes that they own and rent out on Airbnb. But I've been to their home, uh, uh, not they don't live together, I'm sorry. I went to Sarah's home in, in Palm Springs, and Hannah and I liked the color scheme and the, um, 
the the choice of colors and the play the, with uh, the play with furniture in some sort of mid century modern uh, style that we were we were just like okay we should definitely hire them to do the spot and actually you know because we were able to uh, I I think I think it came out looking a amazing the colors are great maximalist um, really bold. A lot of the blue, the blues and the oranges are based on Porsche colors. You know, Mexico blue. We have a, there's a vertical column of Mexico blue that runs the whole way, all the around the elevators, all three oh, right. floors, are Mexico blue. So there's the, <clears throat> that's the underground level. That's a great blue. It that's is Mexico blue, blue rocks. Yeah. But you, you got to kind of like, I mean, you know, it's not. It's probably not people's first thought to paint that that wall. You know, Mexico blue, it's, but it, it works. It totally, it totally works. works. Yeah, yeah. But um, and then and then we also have my Dalmatian blue, which is it used in the logo there, and also on one of the walls upstairs. And then it gets, um, you know, they got the logo on the floor uh, in the Dalmatian blue. That uh, that sort of almost black wall mm-hmm. uh, in the back, which is uh, around the bathroom. I don't uh, know what color it is, but it's, it is Porsche based. And then the orange on the handrail. Um, we wanted. I wanted to do something that was like Bahama orange, uh, Bahama yellow. Actually, I think it's called, which is the orange color on Porsche. But Sarah brought some samples by, and it and it didn't. That the Bahama didn't quite work. Yeah, it looked a little too pale and like light, and and some we went you know more darker and more intense red for that handrail. But that's a great yeah. detail. This looks though. like a dull orange, you know, mm. that you get at a hotel. <laughs> that's you know, here's your orange and a- or your red delicious apples, which is an oxymoron. Right, 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 right. But um, that's sort of the point. And I um, now that the furniture is in, it's fuck. It like oh yeah, it works so good. It works good, but we got to, you know, it's all, but we haven't hung art and we haven't done the final details yet. So that's why I've been reluctant to post uh, pictures just yet because I don't want it to be like, I don't want to post something unfinished. I get it. But it's in the podcast. It's it's unfinished. It's not that different than it is in these photos. Yeah. Like carpets down and stuff, but otherwise, you know, it hasn't gone a really far Right, Seven. but also when I made the last video where I did a walkthrough and all the walls were white and everything, and people were like, "That's fucking ugly. That looks like a conference room." I called people and I was like, uh, "You don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be nice." <laughs> this is primer coat. Yeah, no, we didn't want to paint paint all these colors um, while people were still working. So yeah, now, definitely not. Now they gone. I was so nervous moving shit in there and like. Dude, you know, we did a pretty good up. job. I think we only made that one little scratch on the bottom of the elevator. There's two. <laughs> there's, there's one other thing, but it's behind a curtain. Okay. Oh, it's upstairs. Yeah, it's it's like because I hung the curtain. Uh huh. And a little. You did bit look, of You did a good door. job. It's, it spent a lot of time on that. It's, you did a it's nice amazing job. how simple like a curtain is a curtain. It is one of the dullest things in a house. Yeah. But to put them up and make it level, like I don't know, it took two hours. <laughs> it's just like fifteen it's, holes in the wall. It's two hours. That's like forever though. Yes. You know, and like. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if there's a photo on that array of the wall. Like, it was, it's the wall is a square, basically. It's okay if you're looking at this photo where the t- it's the wall the wall where the TV's hanging. It's the other it's the room behind where I'm standing to take the picture. So it's the same size as that, yeah. right? So you basically, but you fitted it like right around. Yeah, this. it's a curtain. It's not just a hung thing. It's like really blocking it's, off it's floor to ceiling. You didn't even need to build the wall because the curtain actually is tall enough. Could have saved you some money. You just had an open vestibule. No, it either, it does it helps with the sound with the road noise. Like uh-huh. the curtain, the curtain cut the sound at least in half. And, yeah, and you already had the, the quiet glass and all that stuff. Yeah, that door that you're again, looking at really there helps. is a, is a different from my office door, which is right next to it. That door has a special soundproof glass in it. So if someone was like to scream really loudly in the studio, other people probably couldn't hear it outside the studio. No, didn't we? We did that before, didn't you? Didn't we do? We, we haven't done the test yet of no. talking with the. Yeah, you can't hear shit. Really? I mean, it's not like. If you scream, you can hear it. But like, if you're having a regular, if you're having a, a recording in there, you cannot hear anything outside. Okay. Yeah. No. This isn't like Corning kill room glass. No. But we, you can't hear anything outside. But we have a monitor going to the lounge, so people in the lounge can on the big screen pull up the feed, which is cool. And listen to it and watch it. All yeah. Time. Cool. Yeah. 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 Um, it's very exciting. In that photo right there, the shade is pulled down in that window, but the spot directly behind that window is what I'm talking about. Your car here. 
We get, we'll just get some, um, like a fun rotation of tuner cars. Like, I bet you, like... That'd be cool. Yeah, like, but Tim already hit me up, because he's very nice, and he prom- remember he promised a West Side sticker on his Pikes Peak car? Mm-hmm. He asked me for the artwork, which he's following up on that, so shout out to Batim at BBI. BBI. So we're, at West Side, uh, we'll have a, a car on Pikes Peak. Oh, rad. Didn't cost me nothing. <laughs> like, I'm really about cool. But I'll probably give him some storage for that car. He In between races, he doesn't like to look at his race car for a while. Really? It just takes just, up space at the shop. Yeah. He doesn't want to move, keep pushing it. it around the shop all the time. What, and so what he's, car are they running this year? Uh, I don't know. I think, isn't it the some, same car they ran last year, just worked on? Is it Swan? It's not Swan. That's, that's a street car. Uh, no, that's the street car. It's probably on their Instagram. It's going to be I think it's the same insane, car... Sure. I think it's the same car they ran last year. I'm talking completely out of my ass. Isn't it that green car? Holy crap. Yeah, it's like the cup. It's the Lucy. turbo yeah. cup car, right? Right. Is it, and um, yeah, it's crazy. It's got a monster splitter. And more importantly, in between races, it needs a home. And so yeah. I told Batim that it could come live with me until I sold enough spaces where I'd kick it out. So yeah. maybe I'll put that behind totally the studio. Totally spot. Yeah. That's a great we, a rotating feature. Mm-hmm. If something cool is in there, you know, yeah. it's like being featured at the Peterson, but it's featured on yeah. TST. Yeah, maybe. And it, I just got to make sure you can't see customer cars. And if we can, maybe I could set up some kind of like shadow box you know what i mean like if we put like a black curtain yep. up on a rod sort of behind it yeah like then that way you could not uh, i'm sure could you hang a black curtain on, on the, the, rack the rack above or, no like if, if the car you know you're looking out the window at the car can uh-huh. you hang a black curtain right here behind it um L- that violates some kind of crazy fire code because we're not trying to move go backwards <laughs> I'm not, you know. That depends. <laughs> yeah. What what sanctioning body are we asking exactly? Better idea. Let's put a Winnebago up there that will block the whole window, and that's fine. Yeah, no. Or, we, you know, we could literally put whatever press car we're driving that week, and when we're talking about it, be like, see? Yeah, but that makes sense. <laughs> that makes, that way, makes too, way more way sense. Too much sense. Instead, let's hang a curtain and get ra- random race cars featured up there. Uh, right, right. Yeah, hanging the car makes all the sense. Oh, or, uh, man. Press car. And now, you know what else we have to do, Zach, is we have to put together a vertical car show. So we need to get cars for like, you know, three or four days to a week from our friends that are cool, mm-hmm. right? So like we need to go all, all our, our people with shops and all our people with fun cars and, and maybe like, maybe probably like 30 to 30 to 35 of them. And get them to loan us our, their cars for a week, and we fill the racks, and that way we can have the grand opening. It's, we're not gonna have a party, obviously, because fucking coronavirus. But we can have, uh, you know, people come in a one group at a time, you know, for fifteen minute, you know, walkthrough tours and whatnot. Yeah, and you could do a final walkthrough video when those cars are up there. Right, and I want to have like any any like local car photographers that want to come through. You know, certainly Larry, but like. You know, he's on the. He would be on the payroll. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, just whoever, whoever else, like photographers, like, you want to come, like, fly a drone in there, like, you want to come, like, you know, do something, like, with light, play around, like, let's let's do some things, like, let's have fun. I have, yeah. a, I have this amount of time for people to play, and then it's like, er, no more, you know, photography. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, because I want to get the customers moved in too, but like, we need photos of like the racks full of cars yeah totally so yeah, yeah get some cool uh press cars con media Corey could probably set us up with some cool like resto stuff yeah and i think we could probably call you know whoever whatever press fleets and say like can i just borrow the car for a week and not even drive it just mm-hmm. it's gonna literally sit here yeah because i do mind or maybe jen could send some pc collection cars I'm like sure some old would. race cars or something. Since that, all the colors in the building are Porsche colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe Jen would send some PC cars. That would be cool. I have an M3 you could put in the basement and not film. Bro, I, I, need, I need it. <laughs> I, need, I need all those cars. I, we're going to need, like, if it's a car that goes on the rack and looks like a cool car, like, you, it goes. We need it. Line them up. Okay. So. That'd be cool. Yeah. A vertical car show. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's done that yet. Ha! So that's the thing. So that's exciting. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much what our weekend was. The amount of boxes, you wouldn't really... If you looked at the amount of trash that we generated, compared to the amount of furniture that yeah. we generated... How many 
we built. It seems like we built three pieces of furniture. I know there I were know. like seven, but it doesn't. Well, a lot work. of a lot of them generated trash, but were ultimately pre-built inside of. So like True. we built, we probably built five or six actual things, but they were the least significant of the things. Oh the God. the most important things already came assembled. Dude, yeah. can we talk about the quality of those engine block coffee tables, which is extremely high, and they cost. I'm going to give the guy a plug for free. I believe it's enginetables.co.uk. I think that's correct. Um, and, yep, correct. that's it. And this guy, well, I think is just a guy. I don't think it's like a big business. I think this is one dude in England. Uh, I bought two engine block tables from him, a Bentley W12, which is awesome, yeah. for the upstairs lounge, and then a Jaguar a Cosworth V8. Um, which looks a lot like the bottom right one on the screen there uh, for the um, for the, 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 the lobby. And these things were super reasonably priced. I think both, I think I got both shipped to LA from England for under $1,500. For both Are of them. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm really aghast. Yeah. I thought they'd be way more, because just shipping them. I, I mean, know. This thing weighs, <laughs> I don't know. They came in and crating them up pounds. and crating them up. And Whoa. it looked like he used, he looked like he wrapped them in his good linens, frankly. <laughs> oh my God, he's there got a Bugatti go. one now. Cool. And they're, and the blocks are fully dipped in chrome. Yeah, they're very Which, is, which is, I think is cool, actually. They're, I think it looks I think they, rad. It looks like he does different finishes. Like, oh, here you go. Yeah, this he is, offers a bunch. This is the Jag, this this is actually yeah. your Look, engine. 500 British pounds for that. Yeah. For the Jag table. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's held up by the pistons. It's really yeah. cool. Um, and so I was I was impressed with this. Like, yes. And some guy, someone is out there. Because, you know, obviously people who listen to our show in the garage are like, you know, wrenches or whatever. There are people like rolling their eyes going, you paid $1,500 for two cracked blocks. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. Because the process... You, neither you nor I know how to chrome an engine, nor do we have the facilities. Even no. if we had the facility, we don't know, and if we and we don't, and no. even if we knew, we don't have the facility. And even if I did, isn't that how you get cancer? <laughs> like, no. Actually, yeah. Like, no uh, there are very few places in California now that allow chrome plating. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very few. Yeah. Because it's really the chemicals are just insane. Yeah. So you usually have to go out of state for it. I mean, you can do different finishes. Like he's got black and flat and whatever, but yeah. it's still like. The black looks great. The amount of work, you know, put into it. I mean, yeah. I, would, I would like to make one of these one day, but I need to find someone that has a media blaster that will let me use it and, you know. Yeah, it, you, it's definitely, if you're a wrench, by all means, like, make one yourself. It'll totally. probably be really cool. But if you're not, I really liked this guy. Yeah. He was very professional, and I got him, you know, it was, it was very affordable, I think. I, you know, considering what furniture costs... I mean, you know, leather chairs and shit. You know what I mean? Are like are are really can add up quickly. Yeah. This is this is something that is a talking piece. It's a centerpiece of any living room or, or lobby. Um, it's you know on brand without being total overkill and being without being like you know sock hop drive in bullshit. Right. You know. It, you know it's and it's enthusiast stuff. Yeah, and it's and cool. they have they have lots of different engines. Yeah. So. And some of the engines are like find a Ferrari one. The, the Ferrari ones are really expensive Ferrari for some V8 reason. Is three grand. Yeah, Ferrari ones are really expensive for some reason. They look I I don't know other than it's because they air, say Ferrari on the mat. That's because just I guess yeah I think it's. It's a chicken and the egg. Is it because it's Ferrari engine, or is it because they know the people buying it own Ferraris? Yeah, I mean the brand. It's it's a hundred percent branding. Is there an actual Ferrari stamp on it somewhere? Um, like the Bugatti, the the uh, the Bentley one, embarrassingly has Volkswagen Audi stampings oh. on it. Is yeah, there, this has Ferrari stamp. It does. Yep. I mean that's so, so that's it. You're you're literally paying for the badge. There's almost no difference. Once an engine becomes a table, Very true. there's almost no difference in what it came out of. Yeah. I mean the W12 especially if it's the same configuration, right? The W12, it looks weird as hell. That I got it because it looks really strange. Um, Here, just like that that W16 Bugatti uh, Bugatti block looks really strange. But V8s are all, you know. Yeah, I mean here this is a Range Rover V8. Yeah, and like then the Ferrari. Other made, than like, <laughs> they painted the Ferrari one red. Yeah, other and than that, the front of the block does look different. There's more material milled out of it, which is probably how they save weight on the engine. Like, see how this the front is very yeah. flat, but 
you know, it's got eight big holes. Once and it's four holding up an ashtray, a V8 is a V8. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, did you know this used to rev to 8,000? <laughs> Until I mean, a guy spun the bearings. If and I had a collection of Ferraris, <laughs> like, I would want this in my in my man cave instead of a Range Rover V8. So I get but it. But that's a 6X premium. <laughs> yeah, the Range Rover V8 is $400. That's a 6X premium. It's hilarious. That's pretty funny. I mean, and I'm not. You know, I'm sure. I bet. I bet you it's not. Uh, it's not all just branding. I bet it costs. I bet even getting a blown Ferrari block costs money for this exact reason. Yeah, just find them in. There's fewer yeah. of these than there are blown Range Rover vehicles. <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, but uh, the they're Rover. they're really cool. And you know what? The uh, it turns out you can buy glass really cheap, so That's you cool. can save some extra money by just getting getting the glass locally at Home Depot. And uh, yeah, so that's fun. Um, in the meantime, I've been driving cars. The Polestar One, for instance. Yeah, dude, it's cool. It's really cool. It's cool, and in a totally different way than all other cars are cool in typical Volvo way. I mean, it's uh, the powertrain is totally unique. I don't really know if I like the powertrain that much. That might that might be the, the weakest point about it though. But it's there's no question that it hauls ass. It's real fast. Well, I think it's like, is the powertrain is the powertrain special enough given how good the car looks, how fast it is, and how much it costs? And then you kind of go, if you heard all that stuff and, and you wrote in it, and then you go, oh, it's a it's a turbo with a hybrid system. Like yeah. that, for some reason, that's still kind of a letdown as we adjust to going to smaller displacement with turbos. Yeah. Well, you go, it's six hundred horsepower, and they go, whoa, what is that? What what's is it? what's yeah. it got? And then you go, two liter, and you go, oh. Okay, and a turbo, and a supercharger, and a hybrid system. You go, okay, well, that sounds cool, but I don't want to own that in eight years, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, it's, the gr- it's the Group B thing. That's funny. It's, in a Group B car, you're like twin charging. Yeah, yeah but like, in a daily. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want to start on a downer because I right. do like it so much, but I think the only thing that would make it better is if it was a full EV. If it was a Volvo Tesla or a Volvo Taycan that looked like that, you know what I mean? And went like that mm-hmm. and had a 200 to 250 mile range. I'd be like, holy shit, take my money. I mean, take, they're take, probably headed there, right? Well, like, they are. The Polestar 2, and yeah. I think all other Polestars henceforth are going to be pure EVs, right? Yeah. Which is sort of like, well, well, why? Why, you know, why, why then? Why now? You know, why not this? Why not this concept car come to life? Having said that, um, you know, the other car in my garage right now is a Ferrari F8 Spider in yellow. Okay, uh, obviously a press car, and and I am no stranger to attention grabbing automobiles. Okay, I'm pretty proficient at this point, right? Um, I don't believe outside of the little red car, uh, outside of the Countach, I don't believe I've ever driven any vehicle that people went this bat shit over on really? the street. Yeah. People hanging phones out of car. People of all walks of life at red lights. <coughs> bless you, coronavirus. <laughs> uh, no. uh, people of all walks of life stopping you and going, what is that and where did you get it? Hmm. And it's, and, and I'll tell you something. There is an ultimate goal it's like a, a what, what you call it, a grail achieved or something like that, maybe. I don't know. But I think all of, all of like, the sports cars and all these little special editions of everything is all our way of... That's not an F8. That's a Ferrari SF90. Oh, yeah. the, uh, that's our way of inching ourselves closer to this sort of being able to make the face of, yes, I do have this, and no, you cannot get it no matter how much money you have. Hmm. The level of exclusivity of that car, like, because it's, like, mostly sold out, you know, for, like, two years, uh, and because it looks like, it looks so much like a concept car, and I'm talking about the, the Polestar at, at this, oh, uh, the Ferrari. Okay. The Ferrari, look, we're gonna, we'll talk a lot about the Ferrari. Okay, we'll get to that. I, yeah. know, you, I know you got No, that. I was All talking right. about as a comparison, because the, I've also been driving a yellow Ferrari, and... The yellow Ferrari, people like in the way that everyone likes a brand new yellow Ferrari. But the Polestar, people like in a completely different way. And I'll probably get yelled at by somebody at Ferrari for saying this, for making a comparison. And I'm not making a comparison. I'm sorry to say I I made a comparison 
because I have... Forget the Ferrari. Red Lamborghini Countach. Everyone loves that. People love this in a different way because they have absolutely no clue what it is. Um, well, we love variety, and so this is like... Right. Out of left so field. here's how it goes. What is that? It's called a Polestar 1. Polestar? What the fuck is the Polestar? It's a, it's a hybrid. It's 600 horsepower. Doesn't it look... It looks amazing. Where do I get that? Volvo dealer. So it's a Volvo? No, it's a Polestar. There's a branding problem here. They should probably just suck it up and... You remember when AMG tried to be like, no, nah, it's not a Mercedes, it's an AMG, mm -hmm. and then they quietly went back to... Mercedes-AMG. Yeah, because it's like, uh, no, it's a Mercedes, stop. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. You're not going to split this off. Polestar is the same thing. Like, just call it a Volvo. Uh, eventually, that's what I'm... The, the point is, the conversation eventually ends at... It's a Volvo. That's well, the <laughs> it's, the, it's the Genesis has the same problem, right? Right. Because there's no Genesis dealership that I know of. It's you go to Hyundai dealership. Supposed to be Genesis dealers. I'm sure they'll go I, there. No, the no, same I, way think Lexus there Toyota, really? I think there are now. I think they're a Genesis dealer. You have to. I think you, they just have to figure out: Are they going to have enough sales where they can? Yeah, support Genesis their own of brand? South Bay, Genesis of Glendale. They do right. not have good incorrect. ratings on Google. Yeah, uh, nothing oh, has good ratings. South Bay does five stars. Genesis of South Bay. Glendale, uh, not so much. Yeah. I mean. I might to, say the same things about the South Bay and Glendale in general. In general. <laughs> yeah, five stars for the South Bay, four for Glendale. <laughs> it's, but I think if you figure out how many cars they're going to sell, that they can justify opening a separate dealership, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and and it's that's hard. Like you want to split, you want to separate, yeah, and go. We are different than where we came from, unless you get in the Pulsar and look at some of the interior. Interior selection, which is very similar in architecture to a Volvo, right? And that I don't think is a terrible thing. When I when I when I drive it, I don't feel shortchanged because I remember what an XC90 felt like. You know what I mean? I think the Volvo interiors are really really good True. anyway, and so um, I think that uh, that that it doesn't feel cheap or cheesy or watered down on the inside. I think it feels appropriate. Now mm -hmm. look, we're talking about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar Volvo. This is it's a really expensive car. It's a, all the whole body is carbon fiber. Yeah, a bunch of the actual structure of the car is also carbon fiber. Um, it has Olin's dampers that are amazing uh, and manually adjustable with gold knobs, which is really fucking crazy really? and fun. Um, when I tell you though that you, if you want to make friends with everybody, this is your car. And can I throw in? <laughs> Uh, it seems uh, and it's a small sample group I only had the car for like four days black people love it love it they love it like imagine going back to 2005 and the Chrysler 300 just came out and it was like that attitude of like this is like an Al Capone kind of car. It's like a gangster, like kind of really when the when the belt when the shoulder lines got really high and the mm -hmm. windows got really. Remember that like yeah. like when the, when the Chrysler 300 came out and like every rapper was like boom get one rims you know do it like the whole thing like black people react to this the same way like uh, rich black people poor black people. Like, like I got like so many head turns in from late model Mercedes going up and down, then like rolling down windows. What is that? Like going crazy. It's such a good looking coupe. It is. You you look at this, and then if like if you look at the eight series, you know, or other right. other other long hood short deck coupes. Right. Like this is what could have been for. Right, because you know what? It's a front. You know, it's a front wheel drive based architecture. Right. The the gas powers the front wheels, right? It's all-wheel drive in that there's electric motors on the rear wheels, but there's no gas going to the rear wheels, right? Mm. So, but what they do is they stretch that front nose out to make it look like uh, almost like a Camaro proportions, yeah. right? And, and, but because you don't actually have a drive shaft and a rear wheel drive architecture, you can then do whatever you want with the whole rest of the shape. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that long front axle to head position, you know, is sort of what defines luxury, right? There you Think, go. yeah, there you go, profile. Think, you know, Phantom, Phantom drop head. Think yeah. great Gatsby cars. Think old school, you know, open touring, like 
Pebble Beach type shit. It's all about that long snout. Right. And that's what front wheel drive based cars don't have. It's all about cab forward, right? And shorter noses, shorter overhangs. So Volvo has stretched that intentionally to present a more elegant appearance. I think this really would cool. be, especially like the profile in the rear, the rear three quarter and the rear lights and stuff. This could definitely be one of the best looking coupes in a really long time, like, and, <clears throat> and possibly the best looking right now, um, in a certain price point, like on the, in the market. Generated an enormous amount of enthusiasm on Instagram. Like I looked at my Instagram and like the pictures of it, like it's like four hundred comments on it. Like whoa, and and I think I I'm disappointed in myself for going on that little drive the other day with it and not bringing my good camera. And instead, those pictures are shot on my iPhone eight iPhones are terrible for shooting cars. Yeah. Um, the, but my little point and shoot, my little bullshit that I love point and shoot is amazing at shooting cars. And so the proportions of it don't look quite as good with the iPhone. And people are like, ah, oh, I mean, that's like, I don't think the, a lot of the photos do justice. That one does mm. do justice to just how good that crease is yeah. that runs across the rear three quarter that is a f razor crease yeah that and you look at it and you go that was expensive to make <laughs> it, it, it has like it's a great mix of like natural rounded shape mm -hmm. architecture and then a few of those sharp creases that give it a lot of good attitude like the good muscle line mm -hmm. in the door and stuff and it's just it's a really really good looking car um, and then it like it goes like it's really fast it's very, and it's five thousand pounds yeah, it's very heavy. So yeah. it's it's pretty incredible how fast it is and how light it you know and how good the body fast. control and the brakes are. You know, it's all about where you put the weight, right? So they've got the batteries all you know low and then on the rear axle, and then they it's all carbon up high except for the glass roof. So by doing that, it's sort of like Tycon does it. Mm -hmm. You know, they keep the weight low and you've just you it's heavy but it's it's stable. Right. You know, it's got really good good stability. This would be, if they go full electric with this, it'd be very interesting because it would be one of the few all-electric two-doors. Like, all yeah. of Tesla's cars are four-door or five-doors. Yeah. Uh, Tycon, same thing. Like, this would be, and I know people are buying fewer coupes now in mm -hmm. general. Like, we've talked about the people that used to buy coupes are probably buying really expensive crossovers or something. Yeah, they're but buying maybe, slanty backed expensive crossovers. Yeah, they're buying like, lifted cars. Yeah, like, basically, I'm about to write 2,500 words on why the Urus is the pinnacle of actual modern GT cars and not the Aston Martin. And I don't mean to shit on Aston Martin, I, but just I just mean like big engine GT cars are pretty much dead. Yeah. But like, yo, I just did 3,000 miles in a fabulous GT car for four. You know what I mean? The Urus, like, that's a GT car for four people and their shit to go cross country or go wherever. In any season. I think in you, any, you yeah. just have to choose. If you if you want to go cross country quickly, you take a GT car in the 60s, 70s, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're not trying to do that in the wintertime. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you did, it's a, it's a problem. And yeah. then you, if you want a truck, now you can do slowly. that to the mountains and go skiing. Now you can do everything. pretty dope. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, the Volvo. Um, uh, you mean the Polestar? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> what I meant. That's a God, great angle that. of it too, um, and I was at I was at COVID and coffee this morning, and there was a, a beautiful P eighteen hundred, and I brought the Ferrari this, and I wish I brought this Polestar to park it next to it because it was like oh this P eighteen hundred was so sick it was a coupe, coupe you know like this and it was like oh my God you park these next to each other and you go retro future murdering right now yeah um, you know what the wife the wife wants one. One of these? The wife. Very cool. One. The wife just got a new job. Wife's been cooped up in the house. The wife. The wife's had three the three lowest credit card bills she's ever had the last few months. She's been you know she's not done done a whole lot. She just got a new job. Fuck Twitter. She wants a fresh toy. And so she's like, can you ask the Volvo <laughs> cool. people if we can get, you know, if there's any of these left and what the story is. And What's um, the all-electric range on it? Because yours is plugged got, in right now. <clears throat> yeah. It's got 75 miles of EV oh, range, amazing. which is enough for anybody. Yep. And then it's got like a 20-gallon gas tank, you know, and you got, it's probably got a 500-plus mile to overall range. But, dude, the, the way it... You know, I drive it on like max regen. Mm -hmm. The way I drive it, like 
I'm I'm using like no gas. I've driven this thing around for like three four days. I don't even think I've gone through uh, like not even a, an eighth of a tank of gas. And I did a I did a hundred mile blast through the canyons. Like now, I've gone through like no gas. I have had some people say that the back <clears throat> looks like a Mustang, and I want to kind of. It's no. like he. It, it's, it's like if it's you're like, describing it to a drunk police sketch artist, you'd end up with the same drawing. But it's all about the tightness. It's all yeah. about the fact. I say, like, I love Mustangs, dude. I, I mm-hmm. understand Me what too. they are and what they aren't, right? The Mustang looks like you took the powertrain and put the body on it and then shoved a bike pump in there and went and filled it with air and made it more bloaty. This Volvo, it feels like it's sucked down tight yeah. over the. You know, it's not a tiny car, but it feels like it's, you know, and look at the way the wheels fill the wheel wells. Like, look at them. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even <clears throat> it's got the GT500, which I which I absolutely fucking adore, you know, doesn't have the, the tightness, you know. Um, and the, it's got it's got such a beautiful greenhouse with the with the way the, the windows and the panoramic glass work. It's so bright and airy in there. It feels it's fucking cool, yeah, man. The panoramic greenhouse is cool. Just it's so a really it. cool, interesting car. Yeah, and it's uh, so fast. Like it's I'm really um, I'm really excited. I'm, tomorrow morning I'm gonna go film it, and uh, I'm just very excited to go to go put miles on it because it's so weird and different, and cool. And um, I hope Hannah buys one. That'd be cool. Yeah. She'd, you gotta, think she'd have a fucking nicer car than me. You gotta drive a Polestar too now. Then I'd have well. to. Well, I sh- I showed her that too actually, and she's also considering um, we're looking at a couple vintage cars as well because her commute is like three miles, <laughs> so <laughs> she doesn't really need an expensive car because she almost doesn't even need a car. Right. You can ride but a bicycle. Um, but I'm taking the van. You know, I'm taking the van back because we're opening shots. So here's the Polestar two, which I also think is a fabulous looking little car. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, I like a, it's, like a more, it's a more regular car, but I do think, I do think that it makes a good design statement without going. They didn't pull a Lexus, it's right? Not, they, right? They didn't go. Let's get something exciting happening, and then go go too far into crazy town with it. You yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't look like anime. I like what they've done with with the interior and the way they've kind of sunk that tablet. Um, yeah, that's in nice. there, and I like the fact that it's the full EV. Yeah, totally. You know, I don't. We don't need it. We don't need. Is this carbon as well to use gas? No, no. I think the Polestar Two is a much more regular more car, more. and I think it's also more like sixty or seventy thousand yeah. dollars. I'm. I don't hold me to that. I know shit. Johnny Smith drove it. In. Oh, what does that oh, say? Yeah, starting at sixty. At, starting at sixty with zero percent APR lease. Hell yeah. I mean, Polestar is like let's their... Let's get fucking Jewish on this. It's like let's, skunk, let's get the two. <laughs> it's like their skunk works, right? Like, they're, like where else is Volvo going to do an all-carbon construction test? They're, like, they're not going to do that for the XC40. Right. So they do it with Polestar 1. Um, different than BMW did it with the i3 and the i8. So this is like their same experiment, but they just split the companies mm-hmm. off. And I think they're going to be doing... like They're testing the all-electric systems here. They're developing their hybrid, hybrid systems here. So they just decided to separate those two divisions into separate companies. It makes sense. I don't like the name Polestar. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. (laughs) The name Polestar, though, it really sounds like a combination of the word porn star, but adapted for stripping. Uh, Yeah, I'm sure there's some kind of championship. uh, (laughs) Like, like it really, like, it's almost like nobody told them that Guys, it really sounds like you are talking about a someone who's very good at being a stripper. Uh, well, Which, by the way, on the beach yesterday, someone set up a a a a, a, a pole. A, a pole, but it was more. It was on a weighted, like a round stage, like the size of this table. Okay. Like there was like weighted oh, yeah. to the ground. Yeah. And was like really not only very good at it, but inviting randoms to come try their hand. And see, like she had some kind of a hustle going. In fact, she put out cones. She had white cones, little traffic cones, like autocross cones. Right. And put about a five foot perimeter. So she could swing and not so kick anyone in the face. <laughs> yeah. And she would start yelling at people if they came within the cones. I, was probably, like, I bet she teaches pole dancing class. Dude, me and to get Big customers. Chris sat there watching this for like 35 minutes. It was oh my God. hilarious. Well, I mean, pole star, like, obviously, it came from their pole star racing, right? Yes. And there, yes, obviously, pole position, like, there is a racing thing, but. In my opinion, the term pole on its own is not a significant term to the majority of the car driving public. Yeah, Whereas the term pole 
is <laughs> somewhere you don't want your daughter to end up Fair, to most yeah. people. <laughs> Uh, if I go, Zach, started. word association, pole. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> you don't. You think horse is not zebras. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And, you know, I work in the car industry. I don't immediately think first place. Right. <laughs> Qualified first. Like, no, there's, there's a lot of other things that go down. They uh, should have had had a run of fucking survey. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. But, but having said that, what a, I mean. For their first car. I mean, everything I've read yeah. about it from, you know, you and we filmed one for a show and I can't you drove talk it. about it. Uh, you can't talk about the fact that you drove it a little bit. I, now, drove, like, I drove it and it was very good. Yeah. But, but like, I can't tell how, I can't tell how it did on the show. No, 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 no. But, no, but he, you can say like, you drove it. We're talking, yeah, yeah it's, whatever. It got more, more looks and people taking photos on the way to the track yeah. than anything we've driven out there. And well, we that's, had McLaren this, that, and the other thing. That's the thing. Yeah. No, it's, it's very different. It's very different and you, no one looks at you like you're a douchebag in the newest exotic car. They're, they're, they're like, most people don't think that about exotic cars. Most people, as long as you're not driving like an asshole, enjoy seeing exotic cars. But like, some people have that sort of connotation, right? This does not have that. You are a gentleman of taste. Yeah. You are not a douchebag. You didn't, you know what I mean? You're driving something totally different that is not flashy and in your face, but like, unspeakably beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same ability or attribute like that Aston Martin used to have. I, I had lots of friends, uh, lots of female friends that they, they they wouldn't care about cars, but they liked Aston Martins. Dude, pull up the Aston Martin Virage. Maybe 1991. And I think, look at the, pull up, yeah, the blue, blue top right there. Like, see? Same, same, in my opinion, I like the Polestar because uh, of it kind of its aesthetic resemblance to sort of this oh, design ethos of Aston yeah. Martin, right? A combined, it, it's square but round. Right. It's the right places. I think yeah. it's just, and Aston Martin has always had a like a non-threatening design, but people just go, that's classically good looking. Yeah. And it's not, and there's something with Ferrari and Lamborghini badges that people may associate negatively with some experience or some kind of douchebaggery. Right, right. And I think Aston's the gotten away from, from the same that thing. classiness. I think, and the yeah. more with the with the orange color schemes and that weird mouth of the Vantage, I think they're kind of yeah. shifting. Well, away everything's from. gotten so aggressive that yeah. Aston is like a little bit less, but still they have to kind of go where the yeah. tide goes. Morgan's got it. Morgan hasn't changed in <laughs> 70 fucking years, man. Yeah. Like, they don't care. Still got it. Yeah. They pop their head out the bar and they're like, what are people doing? Yeah. No, not doing that. And Morgan just, is the Bruce Meyer of car companies. Yeah. We're good. But yeah. you know, Well, you got blinkers on. What are those for? <laughs> Speaking of people thinking exotic cars are douchebags, I got to tell you this. I left, me and Big Chris left the garage this morning in the F8 Spider in yellow. And as I'm backing out of the garage, a homeless woman comes walking towards the car. She goes, a Ferrari in yellow? And I go, it's called Giallo Modena. It, it's very pretty, isn't it? She goes, I don't know. And I really thought she was going to go into a tirade about something about Ferrari owners and small dicks or something like that. And here's why you should never judge a person. Because she immediately starts talking about, I prefer Ferraris in blue. And I go, really? Me too. Do you like light or dark blue? And she's like, there's a dark blue. And I was like, maybe it's called a posy blue or something. And she goes, my friend has a Land Rover Discovery in a British racing green over camel. And I go, you are a woman of taste. And she goes, thank you. That's awesome. That's like, so what? awesome. What just happened? Right right, <laughs> That's so crazy. You never know what, what somebody's experience was before yeah, the they got dark to where blue. they are. Yeah, the dark blue Ferrari is like a posy blue, maybe, yeah, or this a Tour de just, France blue. Oh, that's uh, the best, isn't we're it? looking at a Ferrari 550 with a... 550 uh, and uh, I don't know what color it is, but it's either Tour de... It's called dark blue. Yeah, it's fire. Very fire. Dark blue metallic, maybe. Man, it's fucking it hot. classy. Yep. Except, okay, that interior is not classy, but... Oh, I don't know about that two-tone. <laughs> That's white and blue inside. That, panda blue? That no. That's bad. No, Panda Wow. This Unless is you're a trimming a yacht. <laughs> That's what someone, someone wanted their Ferrari to match their ski nautique. <laughs> yeah, 100%, right? Can you put speakers on the roof looking backwards, please? Dude, this is, the gauge pod is white, but the center console's blue, but then the leather goes around the center console is white. Oh, it's really There's bad. There's nothing worse than a Panda steering wheel. Imagine no. here's imagine having this thought. I'm gonna pick, make a steering wheel two colors, and the one the part where I put my hands, I'm gonna make white. Yuck. 
I mean, anyway. this is an all blue wheel, <laughs> and it's awful. still bad. But yeah, dark blue Ferrari outside. Very yeah, good. that was a that was hilarious. Um, let's see. I saw Paul and Todd of Everyday Driver when oh, we awesome. when we passed through Park City. It was nice to see them. When Han and I, la- you know, last time we talked, I was in Jackson, Wyoming, and then we drove to Park City and then through St. George. You know the way the way you do. And uh, Paul and Todd seemed to be killing it. Nice. Park City, very nice place. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Like, fun place. Mountains, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And we did a hike in Park City uh, on sort of on the side of the Deer Valley Ski Mountain that started at 9,000. Oh, Because last time I was like, I did a hike that started at 6,700. You're like, yeah, I did one that started at 10. And then uh, we did, we tried one that started at 9,200. It was death. Cool. <laughs> it, was, it was death. But had you been... What elevation had you been at the previous days? Like like six. We've been up to we've been at six. Yeah. We stayed at six, and then we're like, let's do this hike. It's over here. But as we drove and drove and drove to the hike, we're like, oh my god, we're just going up and up. And the and the Urus had a had an altimeter, altimeter in it, yeah. Oh, so it's going seven, eight, and we park. It's ninety two hundred, and we go, oh god. <laughs> and the hike, we re- go look it up. It's, it's eighteen hundred foot elevation gain. So okay. it's going from ninety two to, to eleven thousand. We got. 80% of the way to it and we just couldn't like breathe anymore. How many miles was like how steep got, was this climb though? It was that can three, be really bad. No, it was 1800 feet over 2 miles or so. It That's was aggressive. steep. It was steep. That's yeah, aggressive, it was steep. dude. Yeah, it's hard. My hike I, I looked up later it was 10 miles round trip. Yeah. I think so it was 5 miles and it was only climbing, you know, 3000 feet. So it was a little easier. It matters. Um, and, but it was really hard. Much respect for hiking at 12,000 feet. It's like, you need to get used to that shit. I took some breaks, man. I, I, I stopped. It was hard. I ate food on the trail while walking. So. That's, yeah, if you're eating food on the trail while walking, that's a hard hike, yeah. for sure. Um, and then, you know, Vinny's Caddy. Did we talk about Vinny's Caddy breaking? Not a show, yeah. Okay, so Zuckerman of the Spike and Zuckerman, Spike's Car Radio podcast, did me a very big solid the last couple of... Um, uh, uh, weeks, I had to, for reasons that we don't need to go into here, I had to temporarily make a few cars disappear. <laughs> and and, um, and I made them disappear by putting them in Zuckerman's <laughs> place, which was very, is very this his place? kind of him. Yes, oh, that's, okay. that's, that is, that is uh, Casa de Zuckerman. Wow. That's one of, that's one of two Casa de Zuckerman's. Wow. Right, right next to each other. So I put them in the, it was in the other one, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, he's got some very nice cars. And um, so when it came time to bring the cars back, to bring them home, um, everything was fine except Vinny's Cadillac, which I'm still, <laughs> I still have the ginormous Cadillac on airbags, wouldn't start. And so I had to leave it there, unfortunately, for while I went on vacation, and Paul was very gracious about it, and I was very... At that point, I was very happy that I parked it somewhere where it wasn't blo- it wouldn't block anything. So yeah. that was that was a good. Because this could block the Panama Canal. You could block. Is, uh, <laughs> you can block it's a like lot of things. Twenty-two feet long. It's enormous. And uh, so, but Big Chris was in town, and Big Chris isn't just a very handy person and done a lot of wrenching. Big Chris used to own this Cadillac. Oh wow! Vinny originally in Florida sold it to Big Chris, who drove it cross country. Big Chris sold to some other guy, and that's who Vinny bought it back from. So wow. Big Chris was here, and he knew this car. So we're like, I was like, Chris, can you come over to? And I'm gonna have Big Chris on the podcast. He's a very interesting guy. He's, yeah, he's very funny. Um, I was like, can you come help me get Vinny's car going? And he's like, no problem, mate. He's British, no problem. And uh, so he's like, we need a hammer, we need a pipe, and we need a wire. I was like, uh, okay. What kind of pipe? Uh, about, about a foot long middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, right. So we go over there, and we think that the starter is kind of like seized, right? So he's, I'm trying to crank it, and he's trying to smack, smack it with a hammer, right? Smack yeah. the starter solenoid, which apparently is a thing. It is people a thing. Do. With old cars, it's a thing. I, I had never heard of this, and I was like, "Fucking really!" But then I came home and I told Hannah what we were doing. She's like, "Oh yeah, you smack the starter." She's like, "Because she had old shit boxes when she was a kid." She's like, "My dad always had to smack the starter." I was like, "Oh, all right." Because I think it's like a solenoid has to go out from the starter, and like it goes to the you know the flywheel and engage in the yeah. spin, and sometimes it gets frozen. Yes. So you just whack it and it resets. That's the idea. Yeah. This is blowing in the cartridge for cars. Right. For, for anyone who's played Nintendo and is over the age of thirty. Yeah. Uh, turns out that wasn't it. It turns out. That like, 
the, the, so many ground wires are corroded and fucked, and like he he pretty much needs to replace all the wiring in the starting and ignition system. Oh like, boy! Um, so Chris. I, I'm not only bad at electricity, I'm, like, afraid of electricity. Like, you don't want me fucking with electricity in your car, period. So Chris, like, bypassed all the ground wires and went, like, straight from battery to, to starter start. solenoid. Right. And then... That solved one problem. <laughs> and then and then had to do the smack it with a hammer again. Holy crap. Yeah, because in the process of doing the smacking with the hammer... We then discovered all the wires were basically made of dust. So it wasn't getting power. Then it was getting power, and he still had to Correct. Hammer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the pipe for? The pipe was in case you couldn't actually swing said hammer, you could go vertical straight with the pipe. Gotcha. Which actually is quite smart, and that I think sense. is what he ended up doing. Okay. We ended up using the top half of my floor jack handle. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's very... Okay. Yeah. I mean, you got this whole building. We were at the warehouse. He's like, you got a pipe? And I'm looking around going, fuck. I have this entire building. Do I have a pipe? I, don't I mean, not one you can take away from the building. Well, I, There's a lot of pipes. What right? I immediately thought of was, you know that giant piece of rebar I use on my tours? It's like 50 pounds. I was like, I can bring this, but I'll probably... Yeah. You hit the solenoid with that, I'll probably rip the thing oh right off God. the Cadillac. I have this piece of rebar. I think I showed it in the video, maybe the last video, that's like this long, and it's the number 18 rebar. So it's the, the rebar that we use to build the building. It's, it's, it's about an inch and a half in diameter, and it weighs 50 pounds. And I keep it, I'm probably gonna hang it on my wall or something. I keep it to give to show people on tours. Like, like this, this is, is what strong we, yeah, like this is what we use. And I had to hide it in the building because the workers kept trying to steal it because they were trying to brag to their friends the same fucking thing. They all oh. wanted to take it home and show their friends, like, look at this fucking crazy person. I thought they were like, we need that to finish the building, dude. And you're like, this is my toy. <laughs> no. I showed no. it to customers. They were trying to take it home as souvenirs. Wow. Yeah. And I'm, you know, yeah, I'm not saying they're not trustworthy. It was just a piece of rebar. But you, like, just, you could cut off sections like a, I don't know, like a dessert roll. The irony a is, roll. I probably could. I could and probably cut pieces. it into like 10 or 12 sections and still have enough to like mount a little, you know, nugget of it on the desk. Yeah. That'd be easier than mounting 50 pounds thing on the wall. <laughs> just think about what you're it saying. It doesn't really need to be that big. It could be yeah. this big and accomplish exactly the same. Right. And then you give the workers a little piece, you know, like clang, clang, clang. Is there a metaphor in there? <laughs> Yeah, it's like here instead of tips. Here you, you go. Say, no, I was just saying, were you telling me I was hoarding all the resources instead of breaking them off for people? There is now, I'm yeah. hoarding the rebar. <laughs> um, this is more, oh, we could get into that. We could. No. Um, but anyway. Um, so now the the caddy is back. So he hit it with the he did the hit it with the hammer thing, and we did we did actually get it going. And then he was very concerned that if he took he he didn't want to drive it down the road with that shady ground wire situation so he was like if i take this off like this thing might just die right now like i don't even know like if i if and i don't and so uh but he did take you know he took it off and it stayed running and it uh it got back but but he also noticed that like a bunch of the electronics the radio the lights and stuff weren't working so oh my God. the wiring like it needs we need to get it on a truck to florida so vinny can fucking fix it but at least it's back at the at the shop yeah yeah and wow. it's not i felt so bad like it's you know la parking as i have said over and over and over is at an extreme premium and if someone lends you their parking space for any number any amount of time and you take more advantage of it it's like uh oh, i'm sorry oh. well i mean zuckerman i understand he's a big he has a big building it's fine i didn't i didn't interrupt his lifestyle in any way but and it's, it's a, luckily it's a cool looking car you know well, that's what he was said like, that's why he was cool about voyager it. you'd be like get this thing get out this of this fucking, fucking shit box yeah. out of here no he said it was a really fun thing to uh to see when the when the roll up went up to see it sitting there because fuck I, I slammed it on the ground <laughs> Yeah, he's like it was, he said it was cool to look at for for the first week, and then get and then the he's like, "Get it the fuck out of here, Farah!" It, it won't start. You're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> no, he <laughs> he was like, "I was like, I'm going to get the car out of here. I hope it starts." He's like, "You just said that you fucked yourself. It's not going to start now." <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> the man knows cars. Yep. Oh my god. Um, what else? Anything? We got. I got a lot of dude this month. There's press cars like galore. Like, even after, like, I'll, should I pull up? We have, like, the, another Mercedes. I got the AMG GTR. I think it's a Roadster. I've got two Cadillacs, the CT4V and the CT5V. Cool. Now, 
I believe that is the replacement for the ATS and CTS. Yes. Which, right, whatever. So, fast uh, fast Cadillacs we've got coming. I've got the G-Wagon. And we're going to go off-roading in the G-Wagon. The new, the new G-Wagon. Oh, God damn it. I have to type my password in. Jesus. Just to get press cars. I hope we're not screen recording my password. Do you think uh, someone could could have remember could have gotten my password from listening to my typing keystrokes? We I have the Lexus not. LC five hundred convertible. Ooh. We've got the t- guy. Wait, we have the TRD Camry, which I'm I very which I booked interested. intentionally. I remember, yeah, I did book the TRD. We've Camry heard really good things. Uh, Cadillac CT four V AMG GTR convertible CT five V, the Mercedes G sixty three. We get the Polestar two in a couple weeks, three weeks. Then we have the GLE 53 Mercedes. I've wanted to try that 53 powertrain for like a minute. Yeah. Which is like what, electric supercharger? How does that work? What does uh, it have? It's an inline six turbo with electric supercharger. Yeah. That's, is that the only powertrain out there more complicated than Volvo's? It's tied. <laughs> um, and then we've got uh, the GT 53. AMG, or maybe the GT63. I don't remember if it's oh, the wow. 53 and the or next, 63. the 2021 C53 is ditching the six cylinder, so that's a bummer. Oh, well, I wanted, to tr- I wanted to try that engine, and they're going to get us in. But wait, what wait. should we drive next? What should I ask for? Uh, What's the new thing? Tr- are there any good trucks out? Trucks. Actually, no one. What the fuck am I going to do with a truck? Go off roading again. I guess. Um, well, we're going to. The off roading videos don't do that they don't. well. They don't. Someone asked me, they're like, why didn't you take that Roush truck off-roading yeah. and it's like there's no trails around I only had four hours with the thing but also like in four hours the videos you can't do don't much really do great unless you can like unless you can jump the thing and do crazy stuff yeah. like slow rock crawling videos don't really do very well I so. am gonna go off-roading in the G-Wagon because I want to and I don't really care if the video doesn't do that well yeah like I might I'm just gonna do it like because it's the thing I want to do yeah that's fine. I agree with that um uh, so, sorry, gotta, so wait, which which fifty three are you getting? E or C? Mercedes. Oh, I've got the GLE, which okay. I don't really, I'm not, I don't really care about the fact that it's a GLE, but I wanted to try that engine, and that was yeah. all they had. Okay. And then they've got, I might not even make a video with it, honestly, because I've done a lot of Mercedes, but, but, and then I've got the GT fifty three, which is that the coupe four door one. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was just trying to make sure I get all their their engines right because the C fifty three is different. So. Oh really? Um, so the M two fifty six Mercedes engine has an electric supercharger. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Downstream of the turbocharger. And has Interesting. A turbo. Uh, uses a centrifugal flow That's supercharger cool. driven by a forty eight volt electric motor. It spins to seventy thousand RPM and can develop boot pressure six point six psi. Huh. Enough to provide response while the turbo gets up to speed, at which point a check valve closes and the turbo takes over from the electric supercharger. That sounds great. That sounds like the, a great use of a 48-volt system. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So when you press the gas on this, it says the first reaction, you get immediate <clears throat> torque boost from the starter slash alternator. Then the electric supercharger spins up and gives you 0.3 seconds, spins up in 0.3 seconds to deliver boost. Then... Because you have those systems, they don't need tiny turbos anymore. Instead, they use one big twin scroll turbo uh, that then delivers you more power. So that's crazy. So it's like the cool. starter pushes you, then the electric supercharger, <laughs> then the turbo. That is so complicated. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty creative though that they're like, we. What is touching the flywheel all the time that can deliver torque? They're like, well, the starter. And someone's like, what if we use the starter to accelerate? And then someone's like, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> It, really it, did it. it happens when you leave the car in gear and turn the key and forget it. You know, exactly. Works. That's really creative. That is crazy. Man, I just, for. I hope, you know, I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I hope this technology is worthwhile. I hope the complex, you know, because does, like, does that make this car 15%, 20% more efficient than, like, you know, a basic V8? Does it make it 50% more efficient than a basic V8? Like, how much... You know what I mean? Like, how much technology do you need to pile onto this thing to make it more efficient than that the four liter twin turbo? You know what I mean, or whatever. But I think some of their some of the requirements from 
you know, countries, EU or America, yeah. it's like, we need you to be 8% more efficient. So yeah, even though to us, it's only eight Yeah. to them, it's, it's eight or nothing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I hope the complexity is worth it because I, you don't want to end up with a bunch of totally disposed luxury cars, right. do you? I know. You know what I mean? Because if you if the car if the car only lasts, you know, and I'm not sure there's evidence to support this theory that complicated cars don't don't last as long, but you know, I don't see a lot of like 2001 2002 7 series running around do you <laughs> like, no the 7 series you know, is notorious for having yeah, a lot of problems and yeah. it, and it, I, th- I agree with you like there have been enough things in our past that are complicated that then became unreliable that our assumption is that a complicated piece of machinery yeah. whether it's car or not will probably be an unreliable thing because there's more systems to break there's just there's more just, things there's just to more break. variables yeah. in there you know so now you have three different one, two, three. In a way, four propulsion systems. Like the starter is a propulsion system, supercharger, and turbo, and the engine itself. Yeah. So you have four different things that have to work in concert. And now because everything's so digital, if one of those fails, it's gonna it's gonna tell it the could, computer that something's failing, and it might shut the car down. You take the whole car take with it, it. right? Yeah. You know, like, like if your electric supercharger goes down in ten years, like can you not drive the car at all? We don't know. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the car. I don't think it would render it. Dead. I think the car would because they go to limp mode and say go to a dealer or whatever. Get a light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the uh, that's why I think like you know the mid early '90s to mid 2005 or so is like a real sweet spot for cars that can still feel pretty analog and connected, but have the enough computer controls where cold starting and air conditioning and you know stuff like that isn't yeah. going to become a problem for you when you use them every day. Yeah. That's why it's like you can buy you buy a car that's like a 98 and it's in good condition like you you drive around you turn the air conditioning on and and that and it's almost expected that that kind of stuff should work. And yeah. so there's a lot of cars that are uh you know, not necessarily collectible from an investment standpoint, but you can buy a fun to drive sports car that is uh, still very analog feeling, but still. Uh, but modern enough. Yeah, modern, modern enough where you turn the key, you're not holding your breath to fucking thing is starting. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. When I drive my cars from the 80s, I'm not like, come on, old girl. But when I get in Vinny's car, I'm like, yeah. Here we go, you know. Yeah, man. <laughs> Every day you're driving to high school in my Pontiac was hope this starts cuz yeah. I don't want to bike to bike to school in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that is the sweet spot. We'll see. Is. I mean, I don't know, I'm curious. I know people were, were worried about direct injection when it was coming out about how complicated it was and is it is it cleaning I think people are worried about like the carbon buildup and is it cleaning uh, valves as much as the old systems were and just it's complicated. I don't know how that's gone because it's only been out for like it, ten years. Ten years right? maybe. I mean, I haven't have, I haven't heard any like horror stories about direct injected engines. Have you? I I don't talk to In enough techs. If you're I a tech, not. comment honestly like below the video because I'm curious what has been going on with everything because everything gets more complicated. Yeah. Is it all breaking? Yeah, or is like peak. Is the is the, is the Ferrari 355 and the E39 M5? Is that peak, uh, you know, peak cost versus co- you know complexity and True. Uh, you know an analog driving? Like, is that the most cost intensive motoring experience you could have? Because that was I the know beginning the of complicated is. stuff. Yeah, right. You right. don't want to be first in. Right, like my the, my my crappy transmission in the Aston Martin you know you have to get rid of that because it's actual junk yeah <laughs> like this is the best that 2001 had to offer and boy is it shit now but two years later they figured it out a little bit better yeah I mean all you need to know about that car is it came with a star tack that's the level of technology that it had the gearbox had as well which is a very old flip <laughs> uh, cellular phone our audience is old enough I think they know what yeah mo- well most of them isn't there a new is it Oh, the razor. There's a new razor, the folding new razor. screen razor. Have you seen one of those yet? No, but the I don't trust screen. folding screen. It's cool, but I think it's just it, gonna break. It looked really cool. It I does, saw of someone do the fold and like he held it at 90 degrees, and you get the you get the screen that is now. I mean, OLEDs are the shit. The it's, folding screen is cool. It's cool, but I don't want one. If you fold, if you fold a piece of glass or whatever, it's like not glass. What are, I don't yours? Know. It's it an incorrect. It's an OLED. It's organic LED. You can bend it. The whole thing is you can bend it. 
That's crazy. Yeah, for like at CES for over like over years, over they've over. had like yeah, they've had like a map that's like this that you just roll up and it's brr, and it's a screen and brr. yeah. All right, that's pretty rad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. They, if they've tested the open close and they're like, you can do it forty eight thousand times. I'm sure they can. Then, they probably have a machine. And that's all it does. I hope so. Just, blah, blah, blah. It just claps yeah. all the time. Oh, LEDs uh, are sweet. Speaking of Aston Martin, what do you think of new CEO? Tobias, what's his face from AMG? From AMG? Yeah. Well, we learned in the AMG GTC video that AMG is doing better Aston Martins than Aston Martin. Right. And so when that happens, you steal their CEO. That's what Hyundai did. <laughs> Hyundai learned right, that. They took the BMW M guy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely... I, I think that's probably the right move for them. I don't think... When was the last time Aston Martins got better? It's been a while. It's I mean, been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, like peak was like 2013. Uh, yeah, when the Vantage V12 was good. Vantage. V- yeah. And the Vanquish had the V2, naturally aspirated V12. That, DB9 that's, was still doing its thing. That's pretty peak. DBS. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's about peak. And so Andy Palmer's right about, right about then, isn't he? Yeah, when did he, Andy Palmer come in? Uh, it was just, let's see. When did he start there? 2014 to 2020. Yeah, yeah. so 2014 was, was the end of that run. Yeah. He just started doing too many things. There was just like, it was like DBX, Valkyrie, electric stuff. Uh, there was just well, like the, a the, lot the of The existing places. cars all got worse. <laughs> they got worse. They and got better it, by it, getting worse. I mean, um, you know, they all had more horsepower. They, you know, the, but, but. And Vantage probably got had, far less attractive. The Vantage um, went from something I wanted to something I don't want. And also, the Vantage for using Mercedes' um, engine, by not having the same dual-clutch gearbox they use in the AMG, by having the 8-speed, they pretty much ensure that that car will not ever be as good to drive as the AMG. Right. Which also looks better. Yeah. The AMG is one of... GTC rocks. They actually... Them and Porsche are kind of maintaining the organic round shaped design. Well, mm-hmm. a lot of other car companies go angular, aggressive, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera, and it looks really good. Yeah, and that's the curves why the can AMG work GT, too. Yeah, the curves are good. Yeah. Curves are more timeless. But the, but, AM, but if AMG has did so much better <clears throat> than Aston Martin with their, with their GT line, I can understand why somebody would want to steal their CEO. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. You do what you did there, here. If, yeah, if, uh, if Tobias can bring some of the really good the dynamics that he brought to AMG and, and you know go back I think a little bit to the Aston Martin's like design ethos mm-hmm. you know they had so many generations of really good looking cars and then just kind of got a little bit busy yeah. maybe they can go back a little bit yeah the schnozzes got, got out, of, out of hand and they have to cool everything, which is really challenging. Mean, there's so many hard things now, like with pedestrian crash standards, all the cooling you need up front. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not saying I liked the DBS when I drove it, both the coupe and the convertible. I did. But, you know, same money. Ferraris and McLarens are a lot further down the road. And the AMG GT is a lot nicer to drive for the same money. And the 911 puts the vantage out to pasture pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. but I mean, I don't know, we'll see what they we'll see what they come up with. Maybe they'll figure out how to get gearboxes for Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the good thing is with any any car company, it can be turned around because there's a lot of time. Like yep. you know, none of them the ships don't ever sink. They just get righted again. <laughs> and get more Chinese money. Uh <laughs> <laughs> or have or what did they do? They had an IPO last year, right? That just yeah. didn't that did not go well. Um yeah. So what do we got going on later this week? We got maybe 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 new studio maybe new studio maybe not new studio but new building maybe I don't know we'll see we'll see see what's going on I'm 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 trying to play it one day at a time but it seems optimistic yeah that we could be new studioing that'd be soon. great I know I'm really excited for all just all the new gear everything's gonna like look better sound better especially the, compared the room's to quieter to oh, this. that's awesome <laughs> especially compared to this yeah thanks Yeti. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yeti. You've done well. Still the voiceover mic. I think, All right. I think Yeti is sitting on an island somewhere going, I know. Like everybody. Ended. Um, that is our show, folks. The Smoke Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a connection to the internet, a, a microphone, 
uh, be it a basic Yeti Blue or the uh, the Almighty Shore SM7B mm. that we were unpacking at the studio the other day. Um, yes, we will sound very good. Yeah. That's, and the lights look really cool, too. I'm excited. They're it's, not, like, lined up yet, but just the, the colors of the room are very good. Well, it's now it's a bespoke studio that's, you know, sound in, lit, with better cameras, new switching software. Like, all of it's going to be good. You know what, Zach? We fucking deserve it. Ten years, right? We made 550 Almost. of these fucking things. We deserve a good studio. Yeah. Nine, <laughs> nine, nine years, man. It's awesome. Yeah. That's the thing. All right. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Peace.